proposed to be omitted stand part of the question. And I give the call to the member for Macquarie. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. It's pretty clear that sensible debate in this chamber, outside this chamber, in the US, around the rest of the world, has moved beyond whether or not we should be increasing investment in renewable energy. And it's moved on to how we best support the continuing evolution of low emissions technologies for energy generation. And this legislation could have been a real opportunity to finesse what the Clean Energy Finance Corporation is already doing really well. Uh, but it isn't an opportunity to do that. And unless there are, amendment, are amendments to this bill, we will not be supporting it. I want to take you back uh, about a decade when the shockingly sensible idea of finding a way to reduce the cost of capital for important investments that benefit the country led to Labor establishing the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. This was 2012 and the CEFC provided $10 billion of funding to support new and emerging renewable technologies and projects designed to reduce emissions. Uh, the projects it invested in have also, over those years, created jobs. It wasn't done with true bipartisanship then or now, and the Clean Energy Finance Corporation has been attacked on multiple occasions by this government. But there have been, uh, and along with wanting to abolish it, there have been continued attacks to undermine its role, dilute its purpose, and we will not support legislation that continues to do that. We established the CEFC and on this side we have consistently protected the integrity of it as a renewable energy financing body. The CEFC has a proven track record of leveraging private investment. It isn't just doling out taxpayer funds, it works to bring together private funds and has helped drive more than $27 billion in additional private sector investments and return more than $718 million to taxpayers since its creation. By that measure, it's been an enormous success. And even the Prime Minister in 2019 was quoted in The Australian as saying the CEFC is the world's most successful green bank. So I don't think there's any dispute about that. However, the government has consistently tried to take away the CEFC from its original purpose. Prime Minister Tony Abbott in 2015 said it was no secret he wanted the uh, finance corporation to be abolished. There was the attempt to stop the corporation from investing in wind or rooftop solar, and now they're trying to expand it into areas that it shouldn't be investing in. Those opposite have also tried to limit the ability of the CEFC to support new technology deployment. And you know, this bill continues to attempt to really weaken the brief for the corporation. And that's been criticised by energy experts who say it needs to be an independent body it needs to have a low emissions remit. It needs to be able to support economically viable projects and it needs to avoid investing in fossil fuels. We support those principles. They make sense. And our amendments make sure that those principles are maintained. That really, it leaves a decision as to whether this bill will pass with our support in the government's hands they can accept our amendments or not. There are some things we do support in this legislation, and one of those is giving the CEFC an expanded role to upgrade the electricity network so it better copes with renewables. In fact, anyone who was listening to opposition leader Anthony Albanese's budget reply last year will recall our rewiring the nation policy to drag the electricity grid into the 21st century with a greater connectivity for renewably sourced energy. We agree with the need to invest in transmission, storage and reliability assets of the network. Thank you. These are small steps contained in this bill towards our own policy to invest $20 billion to rebuild and modernise the antiquated electricity transmission system. Uh, before I move to the concerns we have with this bill, I just want to share the findings of a UK study that was released just this week, which highlights the importance of continuing investment and encouraging of investment 
in wind and solar projects. And this was a, a study that really shows what one of Australia's best bets is when it comes to reducing emissions. And it's from research by the D UK Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. And what it shows is that in the UK, they have seen a massive drop, a 66% drop in emissions uh, from 1990 to 2019, but an 8% drop in emissions, and this is just from the energy sector, in between 2018 and 19. And what it's showing is that with the existing technologies we have and with the sensible rollout of them, you can make a significant difference. It, those time periods directly correlate with the uptake of solar and renewable wind projects in the UK and the volume of emissions is set to fall even further as, as they move forward. And, and I think what's so significant for us is the bounty we have in terms of wind and solar. And those sorts of renewable projects continue to provide us huge opportunities. And they're, they are one of many things in terms of renewable energy that we would like to continue to see the CEFC investing in. But to the things that we object to in this bill, it is actually an attempt to make some of the biggest changes to the corporation since its establishment. And one of the key ones is to undermine the independence of the corporation. And this legislation gives unprecedented powers to the minister. Now, we designed a body that had independence in its decision making, independence from government, arm's length, so it didn't make short-term, politically motivated decisions about where investments went. Uh, I, I am stunned that those opposite wouldn't support that principle of good investments made based on the best advice with an eye over, uh, you know, from an investment perspective rather than from a political perspective. Uh, it, it staggers me that they want to see additional political interference in something like this fund. What the minister wants to do with the changes being put forward today allows the minister to determine whether an investment is eligible for the Clean Energy Finance Corporation support or not. Now, the change doesn't appear to be driven by a problem. It creates a problem. Uh, I want to say very clearly, I would have a problem with this, amend this change to the legislation, no matter who was in government, no matter who the Minister of the Day was. It's a completely unnecessary change. But I have an even greater issue with this government and this particular minister, Minister Taylor, giving himself these additional powers. This is a government that has not committed to zero emissions by 2050. And the minister, it's a minister who has stated his lack of enthusiasm for wind and solar and renewables. But more than that, as a direct result of the Morrison government's chaotic and continuing energy policy failures under this minister, investment in new large scale renewable energies collapsed. Yet here's a minister who w wants us to give him more power to control where investments are made. New figures from the Clean Energy Council show just three new projects have reached financial close in the last quarter. That's the lowest quarterly investment in dollar terms since the index was started in 2017. Investments down more than 50% below the quarterly average for the 2019 calendar year. Investment and jobs in renewable energy should be soaring in Australia, not only to bring power prices down, but to grow the jobs in, in, in energy intensive manufacturing and other sectors. We have a, an opportunity there. Instead, UTS and the Clean Energy Council project 11,000 renewable energy energy jobs will be lost in the next two years under this government's energy policy vacuum. Now, that's just when our focus should be on creating jobs. So no, I don't trust the minister with powers to override the CEFC decisions. And that's not even touching on the Clovermore letter and subsequent investigation, nor grasslands, nor Watergate affairs, which the ministers failed to be accountable for. There are senior business people on the Clean Energy Finance Corporation board. They don't need ministerial direction from any minister. So we will try and amend that change that the government wants to make. 
The second issue we have is around the attempt to define low emissions technology to include gas. Right now, there is no prohibition on the corporation funding projects related to gas, but gas simply doesn't meet the emissions standards that are required. You cannot call gas a low emission technology. Now, that doesn't mean it isn't important in the mix to the Australian economy. It will have a role for years to come in firming up the grid and particularly the small quick fire up units that help stabilise supply in, in times of high demand, the so-called peaking plants, quick to fire up, quick to turn off. So there is no question that gas has a really important role. But the question is, should the CFC be providing a public subsidy for it? And we say no. We say that if gas were a low emission technology, the government wouldn't need to put this amendment in and gas would pass the test that already exists for CEFC investments. But it doesn't meet the test of being low emissions technology just because it isn't. Uh, that we think the CFC should remain, as it was intended, a renewables and decarbonisation funding tool. That's its purpose. The third concern that we have about this bill is around a, the removal of the requirement that the investments made by the corporation make a positive return or set out to make a positive return. Now, this is another one I'm just staggered about. Those opposite who pride themselves on being the good economic managers and, you know, hasn't that come into question? All the things they claim they stand for, yet they're happy to change legislation to say specifically that an investment using taxpayer money does not need to deliver a return. I'm just staggered that that is being considered and you wonder why they would do that. The as I said earlier, the Prime Minister himself has referred to the CEFC as the world's most successful green bank, due not only to the investment projects that it's created and the jobs that it's created and the investments it's leveraged from the private sector, but also due to its return to government. The returns it's made to government help make it one of the best decisions that this parliament has made. And really, the question that has not been answered by anyone opposite is whether they want the CEFC to make investments that don't provide a positive return. Is that the purpose of this, to specifically set out to do that? And if so, my question to them is why would that be a purpose? So, as I have said, there is no question that the Clean Energy Finance Corporation has played a really big role already uh, in spite of the attacks by Liberal governments to abolish it, undermine it, uh, divert it from its course, uh, it, it has still helped this country with investment in renewables and it needs to be allowed to continue to help Australia and it needs to be there so that we can leverage investment from the private sector and really make the most of the opportunity we are given. The opportunity of sun, of wind, of the open spaces to be able to be a world leader in renewable energy. Not to sit back and watch the rest of the world gallop on ahead of us and go, oh yeah, maybe we should have done that. Our opportunity is now. We're fast running out of time and the Clean Energy Finance Corporation provides a terrific vehicle for us to be able to invest. And rather than the legislation we have today before us, it would have been good to see those opposite using a uh, amendments to a piece of legislation and a bill that is already creating jobs, using it to create even more jobs and jobs that will last into the future.